to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the kingdom of God, rank or prestige carries no meaning. We are all children of the same God. May our prayer today be for the grace of humility, so that we can welcome any and all whom Christ himself would welcome. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you counseled us to sit in the lowest place at table. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you taught us the importance of honoring those in need. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to practice humility and concern for others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Ha 
us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs. An attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water clenches a flaming fire, and, a, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Our responsorial psalm is number 1157, 1157. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The just shall rejoice in the presence of God. They shall exult with gladness, rejoicing. O oh, sing to God, make music to God's name. The Lord is God's name. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. Father of orphans, defender of widows, such is God in his holy place. God gives the desolate a home to dwell in and leads the prisoners forth into prosperity. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. You poured down, O oh God, a generous rain when your people languished you restored their inheritance. It was there that your flock began to dwell. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which cannot be touched, and a blazing fire and gloomy darkness, and storm and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion, and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal gatherings, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, 
and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. He said, when you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at, at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have, been in, may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, My friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, When you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever tried to make a recipe without a key ingredient? Usually it... Uh, doesn't turn out very well. I, I um, have an experience I remember well in college. I was making pancakes and we didn't have any flour. So I, I was like, well, I'll try using all the other ingredients and see what I get. I used, you know, baking powder and salt and sugar and milk and eggs and butter. And it didn't really turn out to be pancakes. It was... Uh, kind of a good cookie dough type thing, but that um, wasn't really what we were going for um, for breakfast. Humility, um, which is the key theme in our readings today, is like the flower um, in, in our pancake batter of life, if you will. Um, it's the key ingredient, and without it, nothing else seems to fall into place. That is the wisdom that God comes to reveal to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. Um, you might think, well, wait a minute, wouldn't it be love? We read that hymn of love in the letters of Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, 
the hymn of love, that love is what makes it all gel, right? Without love, uh, everything else is, is just a hill of beans. But humility, in a way, is what prepares our hearts to love. It's what opens our hearts to true love. Um, and we experience that in all of our relationships. To have true love requires uh, an element of humility, that you would open yourself to be um, vulnerable to whoever it is that you want to love. Um, I've been doing a lot of work with marriage prep couples, um, and I often make the, the point that um, there is a complete difference in these two situations. Um, if the man on the day that he proposes comes and says, Mary, you will marry me, uh, she would probably be like, mm, maybe not, you're a little weird, that's, uh, that's a little strange. He doesn't say that, right? He turns it, just, just a, a subtle change to, will you marry me? It's this place of vulnerability. It's this place of humility that changes the whole dynamic of that moment and allows there to be true love there, true freedom uh, between them. And that's what makes it all at all happen. So the true love is there, is prepared for by his humility. And he, he often will express that, right, by getting down on one knee. He um, takes the lower place as he opens his heart to her. Our whole lives of virtue, um, the whole life that Christ calls us to, begins with humility. Uh, one, to open our hearts to God, to acknowledge our need for him, uh, to acknowledge that he, he is all. And then two, to begin to open our hearts to all those around us. God, in incredible witness of the truth uh, that he is, when he comes to be among us uh, through his son, Jesus Christ, he comes not with his power, and he it could have, you know, come out of the heavens with a raging, firing, uh, fiery sword and really wowed us with his power. He created the whole universe. He is power its, its self. And yet he comes to reveal who he is by coming in a tiny little manger. Um, he is completely weak and vulnerable. And in that, it's like this, this invitation from God to trust in him, that he is completely trustable. He is vulnerable. He is humble. And he wants to love us and um, to be loved. Um, humble yourself the more, the greater you are and you will find favor with God. That's what we hear in the book of Sirach today. Um, and it truly is wisdom for us to humble your, yourself the more, the greater you are, and whatever greater means. Um, to become truly great means to humble ourselves, um, to be lesser, uh, and to open ourselves to the power of God. We are continually tempted to choose the higher place, all of us. Um, there's a deep desire for power in the heart of man. And we're always vying for power and to be the one on top. And, um, and over and again, the Lord invites us to, to, um, to take another path, to take that lower place um, and to allow ourselves to become truly great by serving those around us, especially those who are most in need, those who might appear to be the least, um, but in the mystery and the designs of God are actually the greatest and the riches, uh, and the richest. Let's pray today, here and now, humbly in this Mass, for the grace of humility, the grace to open our hearts truly to the Lord um, and allow him to do his work in us, not because of any of our own uh, achievements or gifts or amazingness, um, but because he alone is truly amazing, uh, and he works his power in us as we open ourselves to our need for him. We are honored today with um, the presence of a married 
couple who have been married for 50 years. Praise God. Um, Pat and Mary McCarthy. And I would bet that they would be the first to testify to all of you that to make a marriage work requires a good, strong dose of humility, mutual humility, um, to be humble to one another over and again, over and again, over and again, to allow that love to be renewed continually in your lives. Today, they would like to renew that love for one another, um, to remember the vows that they took at the altar 50 years ago, and to ask the Lord to pour out anew his love into their hearts. And so, I would invite you, Pat and Mary, to come forward now to the steps of the altar for a blessing. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman, so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise blessed the union of Pat and Mary, so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace, so that surrounded by their children, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may, um, may God, the Father Almighty, give you joy. Amen. May the only Son of God have mercy on you, and help you in good times and in bad. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit always fill your hearts with love. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you much. Congratulations. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. And now let us rise and profess our faith in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that we are to be focused on the needs of others, we remember them now in prayer. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of Christians throughout the world, especially in Syria, Egypt, Iraq, Iran, and other places of religious persecution, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations, that they work together to welcome refugees and to end the war and violence that drives them from their home, we pray. 
for students and teachers at the beginning of another school year, and for parents, administrators, and all whose efforts support and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who serve in the military or in police work, that they might be protected as they strive to protect others. We pray to the Lord. That we show mercy as the Father has shown mercy to us during this jubilee year of mercy. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially for Edward Barnes, Dorothy Ditter, Dr. James Hitzenberger, Kurt Rockwhite, and Sylvester Stuber, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, Leander Stentz, we pray. We pray as well for all those affected by the earthquakes in Amatrice, Italy, and the surrounding region, that the Lord would be close to them in their need, um, and that they might receive the help they need. We pray as well for all those who are, who are affected by natural disasters of any kind, that the Lord may touch their lives and lead them in their moment of need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray as well for all the intentions that we hold in the quiet of our hearts. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you provide a welcome to all who come to you. Show us how to welcome others and give us the graces of humility and openness. We ask you to hear these and all our prayers that we make through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 679, Center of My Life, 679. O oh Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you, I will always serve you, I will always keep you in my sight. Keep me safe, O oh God, I take refuge in you. I say to my Lord, you are my God, my happiness lies in you alone, my happiness lies in you alone. O oh Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you, I will always serve you, I will always keep you in my sight. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight, since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. O oh Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always serve you, I will always serve you, I will always keep you in my sight. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even in safety shall my body rest. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. O oh Lord, you are the center of my life. I will always praise you. I will always serve you. I will always keep you in my sight. Pray. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, Join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have just one announcement today, which is that we are in desperate need of ushers at the 9.30 a.m. Sunday Mass at St. Mary Church. Please, if you can make time for this important ministry, contact the parish office. So the 9.30 a.m. Mass at St. St. Mary's. If you're able to usher, come on out. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Be to God. Our closing song is number 734, Bring Forth the Kingdom. 734. Salt for the earth, O oh people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the city. justice.